Hello everyone, Happy New Year and welcome to another video. Now, I've tested the Intel Arc B580 in a handful of videos, but this one is arguably the most important in terms of helping you decide if this new mainstream graphics card is suited to your gaming PC. If you've watched or read any other Arc reviews, then you're probably aware of the term rebar or resizable bar. According to the Intel site, rebar is a PCIe capability, a mechanism that allows the discrete graphics card to negotiate the bar size to optimize system resources. Enabling it can be done from the BIOS, providing you have a compatible CPU and motherboard. Your system probably supports it if you have a 10th gen Intel or Ryzen 3000 processor or newer, but it's well worth double checking from within your system BIOS or by taking a look at your motherboard support page. We've spoken about rebar before, I think I even tested it with older gen Intel cards, but I wanted to revisit it today because the new B580 launched to decent reviews and with solid driver support, so I imagine it's going to be a pretty popular mainstream choice. Either way, it's important to know whether your system supports resizable bar because if it doesn't, the B580 could be worth avoiding altogether. And I'm not just saying that to be overdramatic or build up suspense for the following segment. Let's take a look. I was going to make an Arc vs Old Games video, but to be honest, a lot of my older games have problems with Windows 10 anyway, regardless of the GPU I use, and I couldn't get all of them working properly, so I've decided to include a few older titles in this video just to give you an idea of how the B580 handles them and whether they are also affected by the lack of rebar. I haven't swapped out any hardware, I've simply disabled rebar in the BIOS for the comparison results. What you're seeing here first of all is the B580's optimal performance. It's running in a PCIe 4.0 system with rebar enabled. Some may be concerned about using ARC cards in a PCIe 3 machine, but honestly that will likely leave you with far less of a performance hit, as long as you still have rebar support and it's turned on. We won't talk about the on-screen games individually just yet, but as you can see, in an optimal setup, the B580 is performing well even at 1440p. But let's turn it off now and see how the results compare. Of course, a system lacking rebar would be older and less capable than the one I'm using, but by using the same machine, albeit with rebar disabled, we get a more accurate idea of how it affects things. I guess you could say this is just an example of how performance may be affected if you forgot to enable rebar in your BIOS too. Which can also happen. All the gameplay you see on screen from now on will be without resizable bar enabled, and I'll put the comparative figures up as well as we make our way through the benchmarks. As I mentioned before, we'll be looking at games of various ages. Let's start with the relatively new Baldur's Gate 3. Now this one is running at 1440p, as are all the games in the following results. This time I've gone with high settings and TAA. Now with rebar off, this is an absolute disaster. We're seeing 33 frames per second on average with a 1% low of 10 and a 0.1% low of 8. These numbers are pretty consistent, I will admit, but overall this is pretty terrible performance. Compare that to the rebar results, and we've got 75, 47 and 41, which is a solid gaming experience. Uh, rebar being off here absolutely decimates the performance of the B580 in Baldur's Gate 3. Not a pleasant way to play at all. Next up we have the older Bioshock Infinite, probably one of my favourite games and definitely my favourite Bioshock in the series. That may be a bit of a controversial opinion of course. With rebar on we see 189 FPS with a 1% low of 132 and 117 is that 0.1% low but when it comes to disabling rebar, uh, it's certainly not as bad of a hit as it was in Baldur's Gate 3. We're seeing 175, however our percentile lows are affected, so it's going to be a little more stuttery, not as consistent throughout, but still probably playable in this instance. So here we have Counter-Strike 2. Now from what I remember, Counter-Strike Go had a few problems with Arc when it first launched. It was a bit of a stuttery experience back in the days of the A750. I think I probably even made a video uh, testing the game as part of my usual benchmark roster. Thankfully things have improved for Counter-Strike 2 now. Of course this is down to uh, Intel's work on the drivers and with this new generation of card CS2 is running really nicely. Even with rebar off, we're seeing 172 as an average, 92 as that 1% low, and a 0.1% low of 17. Uh, so not perfect. There are definitely a few stutters and drops here and there, but it's still playable. With a rebar on, however, for those comparative results, we're seeing 202 FPS with a 1% low of 114 and a 0.1% low of 94. So much improved and a lot more consistent. 
Now, I wanted to throw The Elder Scrolls Oblivion in here because this was also a game that ran really poorly on Intel Arc cards uh, when the first generation launched. Here, with the B580 and rebar off, it's not too bad. 136 on average with a 1% low of 45 and a 0.1% low of 29. So it's still playable. You will notice a few dips and drops. The sort of dips and drops that shouldn't be present in an older game game of this age that's for sure as you can see when we look at the results with rebar enabled we have 195 so an immediate improvement to the average and then of course improvements to the consistency with one percent lows of 112 and 64 so it is night and day to be fair in terms of the performance differences as it is with most of today's tested titles nothing has been quite as bad as uh, the Baldur's Gate 3 result as of yet though but there's still a chance it could be let's move on the next game is Half-Life 2, another older title and one that didn't really run well on art cards to begin with, but now it's faring pretty well. The cap is in place, I believe, at uh, 300 by default here. I'm testing a pretty demanding area of the game, and I also have 8x MSAA enabled, which if that was disabled, we'd be hitting the default frame rate cap easily. But here we're getting 233, a 1% low of 77, and a 0.1% low of 25. Again, figures that are lower than you'd expect to see with a card of this age. When we see how the rebar on results compare, well, we're getting 265, 111, and 58. So again, more consistent with a system that supports rebar. Next up, we have Assassin's Creed Unity. Now, you may remember this one performed really poorly on ARC cards a couple of years ago. With the A750, it was basically unplayable. Even at the lowest settings, we were seeing uh, silly figures, really, like FPS that was in the 30s. It was really not good at all, even with reduced visual quality and resolution. Thankfully, and even with rebar off, it is playable now with at least 60 FPS, 64 at the highest settings with FXAA enabled. Forget about MSAA though, because that will still decimate performance to an extent. 64 overall with a 1% low of 39 and a 0.1% low of 11. So not without its problems. When we look at the figures with rebar on, we're getting 83, 74 and 64. Honestly, even at this point, I'd seriously consider avoiding a B580 if you don't have a rebar compatible system. Moving back to a more modern release, now we have The Witcher 3. This is the next gen version of the game when it got updated and a few features were added, of course. Runs okay with rebar off 71 fps the problem again lies with the consistency the one percent lows of 25 and 17 uh, do mean that when we hit those busier city areas we can really feel some performance drops and i think that's reflected in the gameplay here if we put the comparative numbers up in fact uh, the rebar on results show an average of 108 73 and 67 so it's a very smooth experience all in all but rebar off again it's going to cause you some problems, noticeable ones. Even if you don't have a frame rate counter on for most of these games, you're going to feel the difference when playing, especially if using a higher refresh rate monitor. Cyberpunk 2077 now, 1440p with the medium settings. This was absolutely disastrous with rebar turned off. As you can see here, we're just cruising around Night City and it is a stuttery mess. The game still looks pretty good at medium settings, don't get me wrong, but in terms of performance here, you can see that things have gone quite badly uh, for the B580. 45 FPS overall for the average, a 1% low of 24 and a 0.1% low of 13. With rebar on, 73, 57 and 52. Our second to last game, Call of Duty Black Ops 6. Again, this is a pretty huge difference and I think it's one that's quite important considering this is a fast-paced online shooter with rebar off here as you can see running around nuketown one of the best maps ever made in my opinion um yeah between 40 and 50 a lot of the time as you can see from this initial gameplay frame time graph is uh, moving about a bit all over the place here not too bad in terms of inconsistency though it's just generally quite poor performance when we look at the rebar enabled results we're getting 77 48 and 45 i'm a little bit disappointed of the performance of black ops 6 with the b580 anyway even with rebar on i feel like it should do a bit better maybe it will over time with driver updates and whatnot but yeah it seems to me like we should be getting a bit more performance anyway certainly optimal with rebar enabled though as you can see here Let's finalise with Red Dead Redemption 2. Again, a game that does have its own problems with the B580. I'm still seeing issues whereby it's not hitting its maximum clock speeds in and around busy cities, namely Valentine. We do see some usage 
issues as well. It will drop to like 80% and then the clock speed will drop. Hasn't been happening as much as of late, um, but overall performance is still satisfactory, at least with rebar on, because with rebar off here, we're seeing between 30 and 50 frames per second a lot of the time, 47, 17 and 10 with the exact figures, and it's pretty horrible to play. If you were playing this in first person mode, it would feel even worse. With the rebar on though, we get 89, 71 and 40. I think to conclude, don't buy a B580 or any art card unless you have resizable bar support, I think is probably the message here. Um, of course, your games will still run and start, but you may be looking at some pretty huge performance drops. I think the same can probably be said for the upcoming arc. I know I think there's something else coming out, isn't there, uh, this month as well? Was it like a B570, something like that? I'm sure the same will apply there too. So if you're watching this video with one of those, you're probably going to see similar issues with uh, rebar disabled. But I can't say for sure, of course, as that's not out yet. But Thanks for watching. I hope this one is helpful. If you are thinking about an ARC card, of course, then uh, make sure your system does support resizable bar and you're going to have a pretty decent time with this solid mainstream card. But otherwise, it could be a bit of a mess. Thank you and I'll see you next time.